Welcome to the Viridian introductory tutorial. This tutorial will demonstrate how to set up a project in Viridian and screen the vibration in a compressor discharge pipe for flow-induced vibration, dead leg pulsations, and small bore connections. We will be following example problems provided in the Energy Institute guideline for the avoidance of vibration-induced fatigue failure in process pipework. It is strongly recommended that all Viridian users have read and have access to this guideline as it documents the majority of the calculations conducted by Viridian. The guideline also provides an interpretation of the calculated likelihood of failure values. For this tutorial, the compressor discharge configuration is taken from examples D1 and D2 in the Energy Institute guideline. The small bore connection details are taken from example D5. Figure D1 shows the process flow diagram. The compressor discharge pipe flows to the discharge cooler and has a connected recycle and relief line. Figure D2 shows the piping and instrumentation diagram that indicates an attached pressure transducer, which is a small bore connection. The small bore connection is shown in figure D5. and the stream details are provided in table D1. Here we'll be dealing with stream seven. We begin by creating a new project in Viridian. We can give the project a name and a description. save, and create a new model. We can also give the model a name. We can set up the model by selecting the vibration screening options. In this system, there are no reciprocating items. There are no corrugated pipes. It is gas, so there's no slug flow and no cavitation. And for flow-induced pulsations, we'll use the basic Energy Institute methodology. The discharge pipe between the compressor and cooler will be defined on a single line in Viridian. Click on the Pipe Details field to access the piping library for this project. The library is currently empty, so we enter the details of the pipe. It's 8 inch schedule 120, and the outside diameter and wall thickness are automatically populated. We then click the green box to select this pipe. Similarly, we can click on the stream field to access the stream library and enter the required information.
you will notice we had to convert the static pressure from gauge to absolute, and we had to convert the viscosity from centipoise to pascal seconds. The formula for calculating the speed of sound is provided in the Energy Institute guideline. We now select the green box to pick this stream. And we indicate that 100% of this stream is flowing through the compressor discharge pipe. We now select the qualitative assessment modules field to select which modules we want to include in this assessment. We want to include flow induced turbulence, mechanical excitation. This compressor is not known to stall, so we won't include pulsation from rotating stall. There is no high frequency acoustic excitation. There are no valves, there are no thermal wells, and there is a small bore connection. We must click on each assessment module to enter the required information. For flow-induced turbulence, we need to define the maximum unsupported length of pipe. Viridian will default to assume a medium stiffness. However, we are told that the maximum pipe span for an 8-inch pipe is 7.3 meters, which corresponds to a medium stiff pipe in Viridian. So we can select medium stiff, or alternatively, we can select other and enter the actual span. For mechanical excitation, we know it is a centrifugal compressor driven by an electric motor. There are two branches with normally closed valves, which may act as dead legs and cause flow-induced pulsations. These branches are the recycle line with the normally closed recycle valve and the relief line with the normally closed PSV. Viridian automatically calculates the critical diameter. If the inner diameter of the branch pipe is smaller than the critical diameter, then that branch is not at risk for flow-induced pulsation from dead legs. You see the inner diameter of the connected recycle line is larger than the critical diameter, so it is at risk. However, the relief line is not. So the relief line is not at risk for flow-induced pulsations from dead legs. The branch length through the recycle line is given as 5.1 meters. There is one small bore connection for the pressure tap. The fitting type is a weld -lit. The distance from the parent pipe to the far side of the isolation valve is less than 600 millimeters. There is one valve with a less than 900 pound rating. The small bore piping is one inch in diameter and it is located mid span on the parent pipe. The calculated small bore likelihood of failure is 0 0.66. The calculated likelihood of failure values are 0 0.02 for flow induced turbulence, 0 0.4 for mechanical excitation, and 1.0 for pulsation from dead legs. It is not necessary to enter all of this information to calculate the small bore connection likelihood of failure if the main line likelihood of failure is known to be high or can be assumed to be high. We will demonstrate on a new line. 
all that is required is to select the parent pipe, define the phase of the stream, turn on the assessment module, and enter the small bore information. And we need to overwrite the mainline LOF value to 1. And we see the calculated likelihood of failure value is 0 0.66, same as before.